I've been coaching uh, entrepreneurs since 1974, probably around 6,000 individuals personally. Strategic coach, uh, well into the 17,000 mark as far as the number of entrepreneurs who've been with us. And um, uh, there's uh, something that uh, really has always struck me right from the beginning, and that is that you can have very, very, very successful entrepreneurs who are amazing in their achievements. They're at the top of their game. They're way out in front of everybody else, and they feel miserable about themselves. They feel like failures. They feel very depressed. And uh, it really uh, took me a long time to get a handle on what was going on in their brain, because this is something that has no reality outside of themselves. Everybody else thinks they're amazing. Everybody else sees them as role models, but inside they don't see themselves that way at all. So I said, well, how are they actually looking at themselves? And what's their brain actually doing? So I got real interested in this, and it took me a couple years to actually get a handle on it and actually to actually create a picture that showed the difference between entrepreneurs who are very successful and get a big, big positive reward from their success and those who are just as successful but they, uh, they don't get any reward. As a matter of fact, they're almost going backwards because the more skillful they become, the worse they feel. And I came up with a concept that's called the gap and the gain. Gap is negative, gain is positive. And what the gap means is that we have a mechanism in our brain which is called the ideal, and it relates to time ahead of us. So when we picture the future for ourselves, we have sort of an ideal uh, in our mind of what uh, movement into the future in terms of progress and initiatives is actually going to produce. So what the purpose of the ideal is, is that first of all, it motivates us emotionally. We get uh, very, um, very excited about moving into a future that we see as bigger and better and more exciting and more rewarding. But it's an image that is really not a measurable image. It's sort of a, a feeling. It's sort of an experience that we want to have in the future. And, um, but in order to actually make progress, uh, we can't um, actually go to the ideal because the ideal actually isn't a reachable point. It's actually it's, it's a form of illumination if you really wanted to know what the ideal is. It illuminates in the time ahead an actual goal. So the difference between a goal and an ideal, an ideal simply illuminates uh, so that we can see what our goals should be. The goal is actually someplace that we can get to because it's measurable. Okay, and uh, so here's how it works. You look forward, you have an ideal, it throws light, then we have a goal and we move and we actually make progress towards the goal and we achieve the goal. So where the gap comes in, the negative aspect of what our brain does, if you reach the point, you actually achieve the goal and you look at where you are in relationship to the ideal, it's exactly the same as when you started, just like the horizon line. You haven't, you haven't moved forward, you haven't made any progress. What happens is that people keep measuring their progress, keeps measuring their achievement by the ideal, and it feels like nothing's happened. And that's why everybody outside sees the tremendous progress, but from inside the entrepreneur, he or she doesn't see anything at all. And they put forward enormous skill and talent and you know they've worked very hard and they've used their best intelligence and they've not made any progress. And this demoralizes them. Uh, they can feel very, very disillusioned. They have this tremendous problem is that uh, every, everybody else outside of them uh, feels like they're very successful but they're not successful at all inside their own thinking. So that's the gap, and then we move over to the gain. Uh, it works exactly the same way. You have an ideal of moving forward that motivates you. You pick a goal, you move towards the goal, but when you get to the goal, you do something very different here than you did in relationship to the, uh, the first example I gave you, and that is instead of measuring your progress against the ideal, you turn around and you look backwards from where you started and then you see enormous progress. So 
it's very, very interesting is that we motivate ourselves forward. We make progress forward, but when it comes to measuring our progress and measuring our achievements, we have to turn around and we see the gain. And so you contrast two ways of looking at life between the gap and the gain. One of them only leads to unhappiness. The other one always leads to increased sense of satisfaction, increased sense of confidence. Just based on what I've said here, uh, you should be able to become conscious today, tomorrow, that anytime you're projecting to make a goal, make sure that when you get to the goal, don't measure against the ideal. It'll still be there. It'll still provide illumination, but it's not for measurement. Always turn around and look where you started, and your progress will always lead to a greater sense of satisfaction, greater motivation, and a greater sense of purpose.